Hi, everyone. Welcome to week one and our first uh, batch of material that we're going to be looking at. And I wanted to spend a little time with you today and talk a little bit about the article that we read and help you maybe with some insight on responding in your blog and vlog. So hopefully you found the article, which was online when you clicked on the calendar and there was a picture and you could click on it and the document would pull up. And the document is a PDF and it, what we read this week is called Theoretical Foundations for Reading and Writing Rhetorically. And it was written by Mira Lisa Katz, Nelson Graff, and Nancy Brynelson. So I picked this article to kind of start us off to think about reading and writing and expository um, reading and writing courses. And um, I just want to clarify for you that this article was written for the ERWC, which is the expository reading and writing course that has been adopted um, by high schools throughout the United States and especially in California that was started and the curriculum was built through the CSU Chancellor's Office. And I work with the Early Assessment Program and with ERWC and we help to train high school teachers um, about how to help students with reading and writing courses. And one of the moves that's happened over the last 10 years within the English classroom in high school anyway is that it's kind of moved away from a literature-based plot character um, discussion and into more of an expository writing move. Um, and I am a literature fan and I teach literature, so I have a huge value for that. And I think we can use literature to talk about um, inquiry and inquiry-based issues. And I can talk about that later in the article where it addresses that. But it also is super important that students get used to nonfiction texts. Because most of the time when they come to college, they're not going to be doing reading or work on um, writing about plot and character. They're going to be working with nonfiction texts that we're asking them to analyze and synthesize and do really some critical analysis with. And the ERWC is a, plan is a program that has try to um, encourage this type of work within the English classroom. And so it's kind of been working with changing the face of how we address um, writing and reading practices within the classroom, especially in high school. And so there's a lot of um, idea about broadening the notions and what literacy is. Um, I had a wonderful professor um, in college and she was quite um, lovely and she would say things that would blow my mind. Things like grammar is always in flux and it's always shifting. That writing and reading is never stagnant or finite. It's always changing depending upon our own experiences and our own values and what we bring to the table when we read. And we've really shifted our, our ideas of literacy. Um, years ago, literacy was very finite and what that meant, it was very specific. And now we think of literacy very differently. We think of it much more open. Um, how do we become literate, for example, um, on Zoom? Or how do we become literate now working with Blackboard online? Literacy takes on a lot of different forms and functions, and it's definitely a broader um, experience than maybe we used to think about years ago. So we like to talk about um, reading and writing and thinking about it through rhetorical inquiry-based approaches. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? It just really means that we're asking students to ask questions and that we're asking them to think about the ideas that are being presented to them in a little bit of a different way. Um, and that's really kind of an interesting thing to think about. There's a really awesome um, theorist, his name is Wolfgang Eiser. And if you go and look, at, look him up, you'll find some really interesting things that he's written. But he's responsible mainly for a theory called reader response theory. And reader response theory is the idea that the thing that you read, the book, the narrative, the article, or, the, or watch even, the movie, or even the room that you're in, what you're the text per se, the meaning of the text is somewhere in between the text and the person reading the text. So the meaning lives somewhere here. So the text is written 
But then there's all the things that the reader brings to the table to make meaning of that text. And I love the idea of reader response theory. And it really dovetails nicely with the idea of rhetorical inquiry-based approach that they're talking about within this article. Because it makes us think about all the things that students bring to the table or all of the ideas or literacies that they have when they walk in when they read text, right? So uh, the author might have a very strong opinion on what they think, but really that doesn't matter as much because the truth is, is what that text means is going to be dependent upon a little bit of what the reader brings to the table. So anyway, that's another really interesting concept that, doves, that dovetails in with this idea that they're addressing within this article. I just want to read one little um, quote in here, and I really like, um, I like it. It's on page three, and it says, Integrating Reading and Writing. And it says, how we employ text at school, at work, and in our communities determines, reflects, and supports the varied social and cultural purposes for which they are used. And I really like this idea. The idea that texts aren't just for academics, and texts aren't just for, um, for going to school. Texts are also social contracts. They're also cultural, they have cultural purposes. And I think that that's really important. Um, one of my friends has a little um, meme on the bottom of their email, and it says, words matter. And words do matter. What we say does matter, and how we use words matter. And I think it's super important when we start thinking about reading and writing in a classroom, that we start helping students to realize that the words that they use, the words that they choose, the words that they write, and the wor words that they write, and the words that they say matter right? And it um, changes. And those words will change and how society responds to those words changes. So it's really interesting to start thinking in these terms and opening up our ideas of literacy. I don't want to share the whole article with you. I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the points that I think that were interesting. And I'm really excited to hear some of the areas of this article that you found to be interesting. So in your blog or vlog, you get to choose which one you want to do if you're doing a typing thing or you're doing what I'm doing, a speaking thing. Um, you can, you, they'll be due by Friday, this Friday at midnight. You can choose one area in here that's really interesting to you or a couple areas and start talking about how you respond to it, what's interesting about it, how you can see it working um, within your own classroom. And that could be for a kindergartner or it could be for a high school student. I know I'm going to have a myriad of different um, uh, focuses here in this classroom. So go ahead and read the article and find something in here that you um, find interesting and intriguing. And then let's tease that out a little bit in your blog and vlogs. And we can begin to pull these together and start to think about what matters in here and how they can help us become stronger instructors and um, understand the reading and writing process so that we can help our students to engage in it in a definitely richer way than possibly ha we have in the past. All right, you all, it was nice to talk with you today. Um, I'm gonna keep um, being available for you. If you need anything, shoot me an email, um, contact me, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Have a great afternoon. I'll talk with you later. Bye.